and they use the solution to grasp any valuable engineering sense. Okay. So let's draw this. And R is, of course, the ratio between the excitation frequency normalized by natural frequency of the system. Which means that, means that I, I, I want to look at the excitation frequency with respect to natural frequency. Okay. Another interpretation is I want to see whether or not the excitation frequency is larger than uh, uh, natural frequency or smaller than natural frequency. In other words, I want to measure my height compared with, for example, Kim Kim Jong-un. Okay. Hamdi, Hamdi, sorry. If R is larger than one, then my height is larger than one. If R is smaller than one, my height is a small The meaning, the meaning is that we always have a reference. Reference. In engineering, having the concept of non-dimensional quantity is very important. Meaning that we always look at something with respect to something. That is the reference. In vibration, we always want to look at with respect to natural frequency, because natural frequency certainly express the physics of the model. That is, okay. that is another vocabulary. Okay, so there is one, and then must be point five. And 1.5 and 2. Okay. What? And this is x over y. It's a relative displacement of the motion. What if r is zero, approach to zero, meaning that there's no base excitation or very low frequency excitation? Right? Let R goes to zero. Then this is one, and zero, one, and zero. Therefore, I got one. <laughs> Physically means that the body is moving up and down as the base moves. That's the ratio between x and y is Okay. And then what happened at natural frequency? When r equals zero, this is dominated by two zeta r square. And this is dominated by two zeta r square. Okay? Okay. So one plus two zeta r square divided by two. One plus four zeta square divided by four zeta square. And that has some value over here. So what we can draw is like this. The graph. Okay. Next question: Does this have a peak when r equal one? Approximately, it is a peak, but exact peak is somewhere over here. Because the peak has to be at omega d. Okay, that is square root of 1 minus eta square omega n. Okay? But that doesn't really matter when zeta is very small. Okay. And then it goes. And what if R goes to infinity? What if R goes to infinity? That is interesting. Right? And R goes to infinity. 
And this is our square. And this is R, and this is R. This is proportional to R to the cube, R to R to the fourth. So the, when this term is dominating, when R goes to infinity, suppose that you have zero one. Okay. What is the uh, fourth of zero one? This is tremendously large compared with the the square of zero. Right. So you got feeling, right? When you don't have a feeling, if you convert some pressure on it to or money. So meaning that it goes to rapidly over here. The, at this frequency, the behavior of the curve approach to as if 1 over R square. Right? So at a high frequency, the amplitude decays according to omega square. So that is one over omega square. Meaning that if I push the my natural frequency this side, then the response will decay at one over, one over omega scale. So that you can have a certain idea to suppress the vibration uh, due to the basic sensation. Okay. And also, interestingly, if you say this is equal one, then 1 plus 2 zeta r square equal to 1 minus r square to the square plus 2 zeta r square. This will cancel out, therefore 1 minus r square is equal to the square is equal to 1, therefore r square has to be 2, therefore r can be square to 2. Meaning that at the square root 2, independent of zeta, Every curve must pass this line. Right? Every curve must pass the point of which the R equals Q root 2. That's interesting. Meaning that if I increase the damping ratio, The curve will look like this. Okay. If I further increase the damping ratio, the curve will look like this. And then look at this range. Okay, say zeta is equal to 0.01, and this is zeta equal to 0.05, this is zeta equal to 0.0. Then, interestingly, at high frequency reason, the response getting bigger and bigger as zeta gets bigger and bigger. Right? So that's interesting. That means at high frequency, you don't have to increase the damping ratio. You don't have to increase the damping. If you increase the damping, you've got higher response. So maybe uh, some students who do not know, students do not know very well the vibration, and he hired the advice of the company, and what he will do, I mean, he can make such a mistake, and he will not, will not make such a mistake, right? So meaning that depending on the system, increase damping does not guarantee decrease the response. It depends on the frequency reason you're interested. 